Yeah. 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 Yeah
and that's it, it, it's a little bit shorter agreement. They don't provide us with any licenses, and I actually couldn't speak today on how the Alberta Environment Regulation over licenses interfaces with First Nations. I just don't know. So I'd have to figure that out a little bit. They're relatively low consumers in our overall license use because we're just doing that little community right there in Moses Lake. And um, as you saw on the table, and then I'll, I'll be quiet for a minute, our two main intakes, we have 311,000 cubic meters license off of Lee Creek, and we have 1.18 million cubic meter license off the St. Mary's. And we have a few little ones here and there. There's the golf course has an intake, Rotary Park, Lee Creek, they, Lions Park, and they all used to have intakes right out of the creek which they don't anymore. We, we've done the community irrigation line, so we don't use those, but uh, hoping Alberta Environment doesn't watch the video of this, we still allocate the acre feet to them. So what we use in the community irrigation line, we kind of split out and allocate between those intakes, even though the intakes are gone. The reason we haven't transferred them yet is you lose 10% every time you transfer a license. Right. And so we're better just to leave them at this point in time. Um, licenses have priority. So we have licenses that were back in 190 something. So what that means is if there was a, a massive drought and the province started mandating uh, rationing, the highest, the oldest priorities would continue to get water. Now our St. Mary's licenses are not old licenses. So, and that's our bulk of our water, but we would still have access to some water through the Lee on old license. Now, knock on wood, we'll never run into that. I would hope we'd never see that kind of province-wide rationing. Um, but they are dated, they have priority. When we, we've moved some to St. Mary's and so we, you lose your priority when you transfer them too. You lose 10%, you lose your priority. And so you try not to move any that you don't have to. You just move what you have to. Now most of the county licenses are transferred to the um, intake at St. Mary's, I believe, is where they get transferred to. You have to consult anyone um, downstream of where you transfer those to. So if we want to move something, we had some licenses out on the belly, mm -hmm. and the county had some on the belly that were moved to the St. Mary, so you have to go through a consultation process of impact on people downstream from your intake, and there's a number of things there. But right now, we're not talking about any transferring. We haven't had that come up in a long time. The county's agreement allows for us to treat, I think, 113,000 meters a year. Um, uh, it's somewhere in there. It, it's, it's more than what we're currently treating for them. Like, there's, there's more than sufficient license there. Uh, so that's okay, 113,000 cubic meters a year. So they've transferred... And they did 11. Uh, we did 11,000, yeah. So, so we're, we're still at 10%. 10 percent, yeah. We're only about 10%. So that is the quick overview of water agreements. Councilor Bangry? Jeff, in 4.2 of this water agreement, it says that there will be an assessment and or estimate of the connection cost. So that has not, have we, have we done that for Aetna? No. And we have, have not. we got any kind of a general idea what it's going to cost? Well, they will be taking from an existing connection. We don't have to extend any infrastructure there. So they're taking it from the South Water Co-op? From that same connection. Because remember, this is a trickle system. So once that pipe is, what's the word? I don't want to call it energized, but once the pipe is filled, the demand on the line stays static. Each of those homes can only take one gallon per minute off of the line. They don't have the ability to take more. That's the new connections. Yes, any new connections, yes. That's they're all in trickle system. Now, does that mean that there shouldn't be a connection fee for that development? No, I don't <coughs> suggest that's what that means. But we're not having to extend infrastructure just for that one. But our water, our south co-op water line is large enough to handle... No, it will not be going through the South Water Users Co-op. It'll be coming off the same connection point. Oh, okay. No, South Water Users Co-op, in my opinion, is undersized now. Exactly. Because they're not on a trickle system. They're trying to maintain a pressure system. and Go ask Mr. Uh, Eric Quinton how much he likes that on a Sunday morning when everyone's trying to shower. It's not great. So it would be nice if that some of them were to convert to a pressure, uh, to <coughs> a cistern and pressure system because it would stabilize the line quite a bit. Okay. So in that, uh, once they go online, they're all going to be on a cistern, aren't they? They have to be. They have yeah. to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know a lot of that right now, many of those people that have their own wells can't get a lot of water from the wells and they have to have cisterns there as well. So, Councilor Self. Jeff, I 
I would suggest that for clarity, you should ask the county, Murray, where the application for services for Aetna that they are advertising fairly vigorously because we've not seen it and you know, yeah, we have to agree to it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll follow up with them on that. And also, we would have to agree, as Councillor Bangry pointed out, the connection costs for said service. Yeah. I'm kind of Agreed. a little bit surprised that that would not adhere to the terms of the contract. If I might, this is a contract, in my opinion, and I don't want to call it desperate need because it's certainly functioning, but it is in need of a rewrite. Yeah, I it's. I, I met with Murray about six months ago on this, and on my other copy, I went through all these areas and said, "We're we're not doing this. There isn't a joint committee overseeing no. this. Well, we're not." Sir. There's so, supposed to be two people on right. the committee, yeah, right? Exactly. So we have all these things. No idea. Well, okay. So we have these things that are outlined that should be done in here, and for convenience sake, and it's not malicious in its intent at all in my opinion, but for convenience sake, we haven't done a lot of them because it's relatively working and we haven't had to get together. But yeah, I got, I got a lot of scribbles and things about why aren't, when are we going to do this? Why aren't we doing this? If we're not going to do it and it works, let's just get that out of the agreement. Or when we get a proper intermunicipal uh, committee put together, this should just go under their purview. Yeah. We don't need to add another joint steering committee. It can just be under the intermunicipal committee and reviewed once totally. annually. Totally so there's a number of things in here that we're not doing, I'll be honest. And so I, I met with Murray a few months ago to say we either need to get this amended or we need to do them. Mm -hmm. That's always been my policy position. If, you, if it needs to be done for policy, then do it. If it doesn't need to be done, get it out of the policy. Mm -hmm. yeah because now you're just non-compliant. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So we got we got to work through this trip through the ICF process. This has to be a key piece. I agree. Right. Councilor Bangry? Yeah, Jeff, get this clear in my mind if you can help me. You say they're not going to use the South Water Co-op and join on to that. They're going to join on to the connection of the South Water yeah. Co-op. Where is that connection at? The pump station? Um, I can find a map on it. It is just by the county building, actually. Well, it's actually, it's in the county building, isn't it? Isn't there a, a pressure system sure. right in the county building? I know it's right on their property right there, and they're going to run it under the highway, and they're going to have a pressure station at the shop. So they're going to pressurize the whole thing at the shop, they do sufficient to get it to Aetna, yeah. and then it'll be on a trickle system. So are we going to charge them for a hookup onto that system? Well, that's what we need to determine, because the infrastructure exists, but not to play cards here in a public meeting, but it would probably be appropriate that at the very least we agree that when someone hooks onto the line, we get a share of the connection fee. Yes. If there's not a bulk one up front, then at least that would be appropriate to tie into the overall infrastructure, right? Well, if I might, Go ahead. It, it appears to me, Jeff, that according to the agreement, every one of those services is a separate application. Exactly. So the Aetna one is a separate mm -hmm. application that we have not received. Oh, I agree. And so yes. therefore, as it says, uh, an estimate of the connection costs are included in that new agree you know, yeah. that new service yeah. application. So yeah. if they're suggesting that it's already covered, we would say no, it's not. Yeah. And you're going to have to pony up. Yeah, I uh, agree. Yeah. Right. So Jeff, how do we how do we service the uh, east of the bypass? So that's a grandfathered one where they are in the county, they're on our license, and they're our customer. So they are paying an out of town rate through NMAX. Okay, it comes so, to us. So west the the rodeo academy or whatever Correct. you want to call it. That's on our water as well. Okay, that was taken off of a very, very small line yeah. that come down through that uh, road. Actually, the, the academy, we did some infrastructure there, and they yeah. paid those costs. They've got a one-inch line <coughs> there now. They've yeah, got actually a fairly I think substantial line. and I were, we were on, on the council, council, on the yeah. council at that time. Yeah. Did we charge them for connection fees and all that kind of stuff? <coughs> okay. Yeah, because again, in that case, if you're in town and you want to connect to the system, there's a connection fee to the water utility, and if I'm not mistaken, they paid that, well, and they also paid for us to extend the infrastructure. But yes, they paid that as a, they're a town customer of water even though they're in the county. Ideally, they shouldn't be. Ideally, they should be a county customer and then we're sending it to the county. Okay. But all these that existed, 
uh, some for convenience sake and some just historically they they've remained that way so everybody east of the bypass on home seekers right some of those have been there for four years um, and they're getting billed by NMAX, the out-of-town rate, coming to the town of Carson. Mm. Okay, thank you. Just for the record, too, one? the out-of-town rate is, the base rate is double the in-town rate, and the consumption rate is 28% higher than the in-town rate. So there is considerable margin on there to, to make up for the fact that these folks don't pay taxes in the municipality that support the, the staff and the infrastructure costs to right. maintain that infrastructure. Okay. Any more comments on this? And we'll move on to 7B. Urban Deer, Councillor Do you had some? Uh, yeah, so I've had a lot, I'm not <laughs> sure about everybody else. I've had a lot of people talk to me about the deer in town. Oh yeah. Is this related to John? <coughs> John. Uh, one of the uh, one of the residents chatted with me the other night and just um, expressed their concern about all the deer. I had my neighbor come over and tell me that my lawn looks really good and his is all eaten up and I'm not sure why they picked his over mine. But anyways, um, this person talked to me just about the situation in McGrath. I have a son that lives in McGrath and there's, uh, there's I don't know if there's thousands, but there's hundreds of deer. Um, people have a hard time growing a garden, their shrubs, you know, all that kind of stuff. So they were just asking me, um, what the town could do, and I wondered. Um, I actually thought of calling the fish and wildlife people to kind of have a chat with them. But I just wanted to bring that to this group and kind of get your feedback on how you feel about that, and if there's anything that can be done other than opening season. And okay, I have a comment for yeah, no, anybody else. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what I did because I had a real concern when you got 13 deer coming in and chewing on your trees. Yeah eating up your garden every year. I spent $8,000 and put a six foot fence around my yard. And that's what I did and they don't have problems anymore. I can grow a garden. So as I didn't come to ask the town for anything. So if, if people have a concern, then I think they can't keep on coming back to the town on things like that. Maybe they need to do something for themselves. I don't know. Sorry, you're not first. <laughs> Councillor Cart, two the things. Mayor, I did talk to Brad and Bob, and actually and Alberta. Councillor Self. Yeah. Fish and wildlife has nothing to do with this Alberta biology. No, right. that's right. So they can't do anything in. Right. And number two, what is the bylaw? What is the law? Can somebody explain to me what is the law, the, the use of pellet guns and BB guns in town? Oh, gosh. Can speak to a little bit? It's a criminal code piece. You can't discharge yeah. a firearm. A uh, pellet gun is only considered a firearm. I think it goes over 1,200 right. feet per second. Okay. So in Canada, Unless you have a PAL, you can't buy a pellet gun that goes that fast. So if you go to the general store and buy a pellet gun, it's under 1,200 feet per second. I also learned sort of the hard way that a bow over 40 pounds is also considered a firearm. <laughs> we won't get into that a ton. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can't discharge those in town unless they're under so many pounds of draw. But you can't discharge a BB gun. Yes. You sure can. Okay. Problem solved. That's what happened my living. There's also a law about harassing wildlife. Well, yes, yeah. okay, so I'm talking about that piece. Yeah. That's right. Well, essentially, I really think, I don't know about you, but on the east side, I heard uh, the neighborhood complain dearly about the deer. Pun intended, no pun About the damages that have been done to all the hedges, the uh, caravan. <coughs> trees and uh, mining, mining intruders and uh, all the brushes and I really believe that it would be useful to hear from a fish and wildlife because they are still the one responsible for for that. Well, you've had a few more. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. around, so I did talk to the fish and wildlife because mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people asking me that very question and their exact words were they have, looked, anything. they have looked at Cardston. They have seen what our deer population is. Do we have a deer population large enough no. to remedy bringing dogs in or having a call or any of the things? No, we do not. Is there something that, as residents, we can do? Well, I feel like Tim's brought up a valid point. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. But also, it's, it's, they're, they're saying 
when I call, they're saying that a lot of the deer that are in this area are displaced. From Waterton. That's from right. Water. And it's not like they're the Waterton deer, but what yeah. happens is the Waterton animals got pushed out, yeah. so it just pushes everything else out. So totally everything is out of whack right now. So are we having a lot of deer in town? And do we feel horrible about the amount of damage that's happening to people's yards? Absolutely. But is it under our jurisdiction? It no, isn't, it actually. Okay. No, it they, and they were very clear on that. Yes, so and it's absolutely right. We, we had contacted them last council, and we got exactly the same answer. And we also got the answer that the dog uh, is no longer an efficient way to move the deer, because I tried it in Waterton, and it was not effective. Just as an aside, I was at Home Depot or someplace yesterday. <clears throat> they actually sell fairly easy to put deer fences, six feet high. They're kind of a mesh fence, you kind of, so you put them around your gardens or whatever. That, mm -hmm. They're there, and it's an inconvenience, absolutely, but well, there, know, there's some leave. remedies out there. If yes. It would be a little costly, but. Go for the zone. I think when it comes to talking to fish and wildlife, it would be who us to ask some pertinent questions like, uh, what kind of a deer population do we need to reach before we become McGrath? McGrath, because that's the concern that a lot of citizens yeah. have is that we're going to become McGrath if we don't get a handle on this. So yeah. it would be who us to ask those questions of fish and wildlife. Yeah. Just, I, I spoke with Arlen at length about this a few months ago. He's a Fish and Wildlife Officer. And as an aside, there's a new Fish and Wildlife Officer that just moved in last week. So we'll have someone living in Cardston who's Fish and Wildlife. My discussion with Arlen, and I, I can't remember who said it, they point back to the biologists. Because in this area, he told me they issued something like 15 mule deer tags all of last year. And yet they issued 100 and something whitetail tags. Now, if you go around town, you're not going to find a white-tailed deer for miles. No, no. they're no. nowhere. If you and drive south, no deer are here because the <coughs> white tail is aggressive. Yeah. push them into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I explained to Arlen that I could certainly take the biologist for a drive, and within an hour, we could probably find a number of hundred of mule deer that maybe they should reevaluate the count. His suggestion to me was through Fish and Wildlife, we may be able to get both them and the biologist to at least come and explain the rationale for the call numbers, mm -hmm. the tag allocations and at least give some understanding to the general public about how those things are arrived right. at. Because for me, and I, I, I hunt and I like to go out, I will see a hundred mule deer to every white tail deer. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred, mm -hmm. easily. Easy down. Um, one thing to note too, this last winter, the last couple of weeks of winter were tough on the deer. We had yeah. probably yes. one a day we were picking up Did. and disposing of. They were starving. It was a tough, yeah. tough winter mm -hmm. on them. I mean, they, they ate our, our brushes. You should see how, how well they clean up my yard. Mine too. Yeah. 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 Uh, I guess just one yeah. of the points that I wanted to bring forward is trying to find um, like a solution or a deterrent for them. Mm -hmm. So our residents are saying, yeah, okay, you spent $8,000 on a fence, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to fence the front of my yard because there's bylaws that say I can't do that. But I've got flowers and I've got shrubs in the front of my yeah. house, and how do I protect yeah. those, right? I know. So are, is there a, do I throw garlic down? Do I, I've heard like Irish that. Spring <laughs> soap and all those types of things. Like how do we help people yeah. to not have that kind of well, stuff damage on so them? So, I mean, that's just why I'm bringing it forward yeah. and if we can get fish and wildlife and the biologist. Together, and the biologist, that would be great. So yeah. that we can. So I haven't met the new Fish and Wildlife yet. <coughs> I'm just settling in, so it's my intent to get in front of them as soon as I can. I mean, I remember last year, Mayor, you had all those bulbs come up, all those beautiful tulips. We came back from a meeting, <laughs> gone. <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah. And so, yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you for sure. Plants up there. Good feet. Well, they, my I think they've grazed off all the tulips. And I see cougars comes in. It's gone. gone. That's my concern, too. Yeah, yeah, what do they bring in for predators, right? Yeah, we're right on the creek, and the cougars will come in and eat them, I mean. Well, they're getting more and more, <coughs> they're scrounging more. I, I have a fence in my backyard, too, but I have a small space between myself and my neighbor, and they're actually going yeah. right yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they between do the two well, of us. That jumped the, the first jumped time the fence in fence where we live. 20 years, years in my backyard. Yeah. Yeah, winter was tough on them. They'll yeah. paint yeah. 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 I mean, the carry gun, 
tree that I have is totally destroyed. I will That's keep trying doing. to get them here. Oh, the so can, can I request that? Yeah. Go, go right ahead. Yeah. I'd just like to make a recommendation that you contact the fish and wildlife and the biologist and have them come and do it, do it, do it. help us understand yeah. what's going on in our area. Yeah. All in favor? I will tell them they've been summoned. <laughs> Maybe drop off a goodie basket okay. first. It's welcome. We have a letter from Josh Malin. You've read it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any comments on that letter? Just looking Anybody for ready to a go for time a tour? my work. Essentially, if I understand the intent is to have the whole council do the visit at once. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When would be a good time to go? Can I make a recommendation? Sure. Either just before or just after our next council. I was just going to say that. Yeah. A Tuesday. Instead. Four o'clock work for everybody next Tuesday. I know it's tough for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but okay. okay. That's fine. But it's daylight. We could do it after too. Yep. And Josh is amenable, I think, to any time in the yep. agenda. Okay. I'm trying to think of the agenda next week. It's not bad, but if we said, well, yeah, if we just texted him and said it's going to be somewhere between here and here, yep. Yep. we're done. Meet us over there in ten minutes. Yep. That idea. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. After May eighth meeting. Okay. Okay. I'll call him tomorrow. All right. So we have a letter from uh, Sterling. Got a chance to read that over? Yep. By the way, did you see my email on that topic? Mm -hmm. um, I was, AUMA sent out an email yesterday saying, we seem to have some misunderstanding on our use of the word equitable. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, we would consider a number of other factors in equitable. And I kind of chuckled because that was what the mayor focused on in her letter was this term equitable. Mm -hmm. So they said, this was sent out to everybody. It wasn't sent to me. This was all AUMA members that there seems to be some concern over the use of the term equitable. Well, the term equitable is, is, is not good for yeah. us. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really glad I perceived that we understand the term differently than what I may understand it. Um, before we move on, Councillor uh, Self brought up the fact that we got a little bit of business that may be arising from the delegations. Anything on the, the Mr. Hepner's presentation? How about Mr. Yeah, Barfus's? So so. Anybody want to comment on that? Anything? Comment on that. Yeah. Mayor? My comment that the rate this that. year the rate is better for them than ever. That's right. So I would say once you see the rate, maybe we'll understand that we did not need to make an adjustment. Exactly. Uh, yeah, adjustment has been made right in that budget through the lowering of the education mill rate. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I'm three. We've addressed the, the letter to Butcher. What's yeah. that? I think item three and your Yeah, you yeah. got the letter. Yeah. The letter. So yeah. I think we covered it all. Okay. Mr. Hellworth? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We're good there. Yeah. All right, so we have a letter from Vicinia. That is a very interesting letter, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, Jeff, I was a little surprised that OSC did not seem to agree with the idea that a bylaw is a public document, therefore can be used as a reference for other municipalities. I was very surprised that yeah. this is something that didn't catch. That, that's not new for Orsk. Uh, years ago, we were trying to use McGrath's IMDP to fashion ours and got a sternly worded letter from Len saying, that's our intellectual property, you can't just use it. And we said, yeah, but we will. But it's not the intellectual property <laughs> once. And that's all it was. Once, one, once a, a council yeah. approved a bylaw, it's a public document that's right. available to all and can be used for further purposes. So this was just Orsk. Uh, I, I, I found it very I interesting. I found that response excellent. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, where are we going? Yeah. Orsk feeling a little touchy these days? Or what? Sorry, yeah. Well, it's a matter of, uh, is there a competitor? 
Uh, How'd you big boy man? Correct me if I'm wrong. Forest requisitions money from each of the municipalities oh, listed in here. Yep. They're creations of the municipalities. That's right. Yeah. And we pay for these studies to be done. So yeah. how do they how do they justify that it's theirs when it's actually ours? But the minute you pass a bylaw is public, public property. It's public property yeah. And so they have nothing else to do is out of their hands. Yeah. I see and a big waste of tax dollars going to court. And, they do. and I'm thinking, if they ever go to court, well, who's uh, on your court that would be no bad. On court. Court. Well, today. please let them know how displeased we are with their actions. I, I will. I absolutely will, because I sat there and I just dumped it. Well, ex explain to them that a bylaw is a public property. <coughs> yeah. yeah, Richard, just tell them that when a bylaw is passed, if Another community besides the monkey see monkey do. There's nothing they can do about it. That's right. No. That's right. Why reinvent the wheel? It's yeah. there. And it doesn't exactly. offend us. Good point, Paula. <laughs> and essentially, you can tell tell it's them that as a, a rate payer of theirs, it does not offend us that somebody else uses the material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know how it would offend anybody. But it offend them. <laughs> well. Exactly, but I can't understand it when I read that letter. You said that the village of Sterling referenced our letter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Come up with your own ideas. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> the, 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 the CAO couldn't even sign that letter. He knows that. Anyway. Last item. We have a letter inviting us to participate in the Alzheimer's Walk on the 26th of May. Invited. What's that? I think I you can remember. I was being invited. Yeah, I yeah, for that 26 mile walk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 26. On the 26th of May for 26 miles. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> <you got there? laughs> Councillor, I have gone from the day one that I presented. So are you planning on going again? Yes, sir. All right. So Do you want the crippled to RSVP or somebody can push them? How's that? <laughs> All right. All right. But if you want to sponsor me to do that walk, heck, I'll take whatever sponsorship. We'll RSVP it a moment. All right. I think we're done. Move to adjourn. Oh, just, just, hold on. I will. Now, Mary, you brought up an interesting thing there. Do we want to sponsor you as a council? But it's up to you. You'll decide that. I always make a donation on my behalf and my husband's behalf. But they're happy to know that the mayor made a contribution. They don't know where the funds come from. <laughs> what, would be, what would be appropriate? You guys, I'm just joking. <laughs> Forget it. No, well, I'm not joking. No. Well, okay. well, we are not spending public ones if we can't let Absolutely someone not. have no. pianos in their place. Absolutely not. Come out of your own pocket, so dig deeper. We're going to hear about Move to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor. All right.